this is the ordinary point. This is all of this is the question, right? So they give us the DE, they give us the ordinary point. So step one, we have to find the singular points. So all we do is we take this and set it equal to zero, okay? So x squared minus nine equals zero. Step one. Then we just have to solve this. So we could factor or we could live dangerously and add the nine. Let's live on the edge. So let's add nine. You might say, why is this living dangerously? Because sometimes when you do this, people forget to put the, um, what goes here? Plus or minus, yeah. So these are the singular points. These are your singular points. Now you could probably do this problem in your head. Um, I don't like that. I like drawing pictures because it's fun. You get to like draw a little picture. Like it's always fun when you can draw a picture and figure out the math problem. So let's draw a picture. So to figure out your singular points, uh, you figure out your R, your radius of convergence, which is R, uh, draw a picture and plot your singular points. So your singular points were um, three and negative three. So one, two, three, that's the singular point. One, two, three, that's the singular point. These are the bad points, right? These are bad, right? Bad, singular points, okay? So now we have to find R. Well, R is the distance from the ordinary point to the closest singular point. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw the ordinary point here on the graph. So the ordinary point is over here, it's, it'll be seven. And this is three, and this is negative three. So this is the ordinary point. So r is the distance from the ordinary point to the closest singular point. Which one is closer, negative three or three? Three. three. So what would the distance be in this case? What would r be? Four, right, it's just four. Everyone see it? It's four. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I mean, how do you get from three to seven? It's just four, right? Like, it's just four. That's it, that's it, that's it. Any questions? That's it. Easy. It's really easy. I could have just shown you that and skipped all that, but I don't know. I just, here's another one. B. Here. B. X equals negative 8. X equals negative 8. See if you can do this one. See if you can find um, R on your own. Try to do it. Like, take, take, take a minute and see if you can find R in this problem. Yes, it is. It's that easy. I know. I know. It's that easy. I know. It's five, right? It's five. Do you see why it's five? No? Try to do it. Then draw like a picture. Plot your singular points. Plot your ordinary point and see if you can find it. So that's the ordinary point. I'll just do it. Check it out. So here's negative three. Here's three. Oh, so negative eight is over here. So the distance between your ordinary point and your closest singular point is five. So we were using the exact same problem? Yeah, we're using the same problem. It's just part B. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One more. Two more. C. X, X minus eight is your X naught, right? Uh, yeah. X, yeah. X, X naught is negative eight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. X naught would be negative eight. That's the ordinary point. That's your ordinary point. Yeah. About the given ordinary point. So this is the ordinary point and you're just finding the distance from the ordinary point to the closest singular point. Let's just be silly, what if it was zero? So if it's zero, you have a tie, right? But who cares, right? So if it's zero, three both ways. it's three both ways, yeah. Because here's three, here's negative three, good. So it's, th so it's just three, good Spencer, so it's just three. It's just three, it's just three. What if it was a complex number though? So let's talk about that, because um, you, know, you should learn stuff. Because uh, this is pretty easy, right? So what if it was, um, Let's say it was, uh, what if it was 2 plus 3i? What if it was that, right? What if it was 2 plus 3i? So how would you do this? Well, before we do this, I have to show you some stuff that you've probably never seen before. Um, if you have a complex number, so I'll do it up here, so a side. So if you have a complex number and you write it, this is not in the book, but the book just assumes you know it for some reason. So if you have a complex number, say z, a complex number can be written um, as a plus bi, right? Every complex number can be written that way, right? You can also think of it as an ordered pair. You can think of it as a comma b, like this, okay? So you can think of all complex numbers as ordered pairs or as a plus bi. So what am I gonna show you? Well, there's something called the modulus of a complex number. So if this is our complex number, a plus bi, and you draw a vector, that has a terminal point at that complex number, right? Again, the complex number can be thought of as a comma b. 
then the modulus of z, it looks like the absolute value symbol, but it's not. Okay, it's something new, it's called modulus. And what is it? Well, you can use the theorem of Pythagoras. It's the square root of a squared plus b squared. This is called the modulus of a complex number. Okay, so the modulus function, you can think of it as a distance function, right? It gives you the distance between the complex number and the origin. So if you have two complex numbers and you're trying to find the distance between them, you just subtract them and then just put those bars there. So in this case here, let's do it. We first plot our singular points. So three and negative three. So here's three, and then here's negative three. And then we have to plot our complex number. So you want to think of it as an ordered pair. So two comma three, right? So you go right two and up three. One, two, three. So there's our complex number. That's two plus three i. Two plus three i or 2 comma 3, whichever you prefer. So which one is going to be closer in this case to the complex number? Uh, 3 or negative 3? Three? 3, yeah. Just by looking at the picture, it's not really drawn perfectly, but you can see that 3 is the closer complex number, right? So we have to find this distance here. That's going to be our r. So to find r, all you do is you subtract them and then take the modulus. So let's do it. So we have modulus 2 plus 3i minus 3. It doesn't matter which one you put first, okay? You can put the three first, but it's important, if you put the three first, you have to have parentheses around the two plus three i. That's why I put the two plus three i first. So you just subtract them, and then you just do the math inside the modulus, right? So two minus three is negative one, so we get modulus negative one plus three i, okay? And then now we take the square roots, so it'll be square root, we use the formula for the modulus, right? So it always reduces to just two things, a plus bi. So you can always use this formula for the modulus. So a here is negative one. So when you square that, it'll be negative one squared plus, and then three squared, three squared. So you get negative one squared, which is one. So you get one plus nine, uh, which is 10. And that's it, that would be your r. That would be your minimum radius of convergence, right? That would be the R. So all you do is you plot your singular points, you plot your complex number, think of it as an ordered pair, right? Two comma three, and then just like look at the picture, say, oh, this one's closer, then you subtract, and then you just use the modulus formula, right? That's your A. So R is root 10. So R is root 10. That's it. Mm -hmm. And this is in the book, which is kind of interesting, right? I'm like, well, why is it in the book? Like, this is DE, right? Like, they, where do you learn this? You don't learn this in any class up until now, right? I mean, did anyone know this already? Anyone? Yeah, this is new. It's quite an example in the book, yeah. The example in the book is worse. It requires that you use the quadratic formula to solve this equation, but I didn't want to do that because it's more work, so. Yeah, I know. I was like, no. So, <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> Uh, we should do another one. Let's do another one just to make sure you got it. E. Here we go. E. So here's, here's another complex number. Uh, oh, I know, I know. Negative 4 plus 6i. See if you can do it this time. See if you can do it. So, so solution. So step one, we draw the little, you know, picture. So here's 3. Here's negative 3. Okay, those are our singular points. So now we have to plot our ordinary point, which is negative 4 plus 6i. It doesn't have to be perfect, so it's like somewhere over here. It's like negative 4, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so like over here. So this is negative 4 plus 6i. All right, that's how you plot a complex number. Negative 4 plus 6i. So obviously, uh, negative 3 is closer in this case, right? It's supposed to be a straight line. So all you have to do now is find the distance. So you find the modulus, a little bit bigger so you can see. So it's negative 4 plus 6i. Negative 4 plus 6i. Oh, but it's minus negative 3. So I'll show the extra step so you see it. Minus negative 3. Anyone mess up on that part? You did? Okay. So I'm glad I showed it. So this is negative 4. You can take a whole class on this stuff, on the complex num number stuff. You can take it after this class, I think. It's uh, offered at other schools. Uh, 6i plus 3. Mm -hmm. Plus 3. This? Oh, the formula. So basically, yeah, I didn't tell you. I guess I said it, but I never wrote it. If you have two complex numbers, you just subtract them and take the modulus. So like if you have like 3 plus 2i, 
and negative 2 minus i, and you want to find the distance, you just do this. 3 plus 2i, and then you subtract them. Okay, thank you, David. Yeah, good, good question. Yeah, so to find the distance between two complex numbers is a really good question. You just subtract, and that gives you the distance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good question. Good. So then this will be uh, negative 1 plus 6i. Right, and then, so this is equal to the square root, square root, you square the negative one, you square the uh, six, so we get square root of 37. And that's it, that would be your R, that would be your, your minimum radius of convergence, minimum radius of convergence. Any questions on that one?